Okay, okay. Hello, guys. Uh, thanks again, Barry, for the uh, invitation here. So it's my it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, this is my debut as a as a speaker. So every time I get uh, stuck up, you can throw something at me, but please be gentle. Uh, okay, as uh, as you know, my name is Misho, and uh, I'm working as a front-end developer at Grupa Pracuj. And at Grupa Pracuj, we are uh, building uh, great things. We are uh, building state-of-art applications in React, uh, Angular, uh, but also we have some uh, nasty code that uh, that builds is built by someone else. So we need to. Um, we need to work with it, and I would like you. I would like to tell you a short story about it, about one of products that we are working on. But before we start, uh, I have a one question for you guys: uh, Who's been working with legacy code? Raise of hands. Whoa, that's such a crowd. <laughs> so I'm I'm not the only one. Uh, you know, there's legacy applications can be really very different uh, between each other, but they have uh, some similarities. Uh, they are really hard to maintain. <clears throat> uh, when you are working on it, you are reading some uh, documentation from back uh, back before you all was born, so you are uh, feeling like you're entering time machine. Uh, their data flows can be really complicated, and some methods uh, just puts out really weird outputs. And sometimes you can break down your morale, and that you want to go home and try not to cry. Yeah, but um, but it don't have to be like this. Yeah, I think that we are developers, so uh, we are on the mission. Yeah, we are on the mission to build great products and. I called it mission that we want to uh, make internet great again, yeah? Okay, so uh, let's start with some background about the application I'm talking about. So our app is an applicant tracking system. Uh, it's a kind of software that uh, uh, is uh, using to manage the recruiting and uh, hiring process <coughs> and uh, access to this uh, application uh, is uh, given after first job posting made on uh, Pracuj.pl. Mm, there are some more advanced functions that you can uh, you can access through AppSelling. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is important for this application to work because this is the way it earns their money, and application was a part of uh, one big solution uh, of Visual Studio that contained all the APIs on the, all the consumers, all the backend, and also this weird hybrid .NET MVC with Angular JS in version 1.3. And uh, something about the team uh, that were working on this project. It's uh, uh, backend developers. There was three, four um, C sharp developers. I say three, four because they migrated between other uh, product teams. Uh, there are two uh, front end developers. It's myself and uh, Damian over there. And, and there was also one automated test developer. And one UX designer who went later to Design Studio to other uh, to other team, and also we've got support from our front-end expert and architect Patricius, who is back there. <laughs> yeah, we love each other at Pracuj. <coughs> okay, so what was the expectations uh, that also we and business have in common? We want to develop business features fast. Yeah, we we don't want to work too much on on our business features, and application should be reli reliable and easy to maintain, uh, because uh, at the moment uh, that we were uh, we were working. Uh, that was about 65, 70 percent of 
people who, who bought um, a job posting at Pratsupel was logging in the application, so we wanted also to engage these users more and uh, make them love our app. Okay, let's talk something about goals. Uh, there were some business goals, and it was one big one, uh, upcoming GDPR, and we want, to, uh, we want our application to be uh, GDPR compliant. So, uh, because uh, you need to understand also that uh, every, um, every candidate that every applied for job on Pratsupel landed in, uh, in our application, or there was uh, some other, um, other way of, uh, of uh, application getting into, into our applic uh, applicant into our application when you have a profile on Pratsupel and you got recommended for uh, job posting. And we need to uh, tackle the issue that um, applicant wanted to delete the application. Yeah? And there was also some other business goals that I won't mention because it's not a part of this uh, presentation. And there was also goals uh, made by us. And it was um, quite universal goals. Uh, we want to spend less time on uh, bugs and support. We want a better code quality and uh, we want to have uh, better control on our application, so you wanted uh, monitoring. So every time when there is some issue or error on our client laptop or computer on mobile, we wanted to get uh, some, uh, some notification about it. And how we achieved it? Um, we can divide it on some steps. So first, the plan. Um, the plan was that, that we want to be as much as transparent with our, with our business side. Uh, so this means uh, no refactoring after hours, no working on the side. We want all our work to be, um, to be in our sprints, yeah? to, to evaluate uh, first. Um, we need first to evaluate what we will do and then do it with business knowledge of this. And we want to have a common language with business, which means that uh, we needed to translate our issues that we have with our uh, application to, to business language. So we need to generate some reports to, um, to have a ba backup from, uh, from business side. And also, we wanted better code review. That's quite obvious. And also, we are, as a developers, we are lazy, and we want to automate most of uh, processes that is happening during uh, web development. <coughs> so we wanted also uh, easier continuous deployment. And for that, we decided to divide front-end and back-end to separate repositories. Uh, the plan for better monitoring was Sentry I.O. And we want to update as much as possible. So we wanted to update uh, Angular to uh, the latest one. I mean, Angular JS, not we don't want to go YOLO and go to the latest Angular, like six or something. And yeah, because uh, in Angular, for example, 1.5, there was introduction of uh, Angular components. So, so we decided that it, it will be easier to develop uh, business features. OK, the execution. Um, so we decided to use Husky for linting and uh, testing code before we commit something to repository. Uh, we wanted to have some more coherent uh, uh, indents, etc., so we decided to use uh, uh, edit config. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, with Husky we wanted to lint our code, so we decided to use slint. 
And also we've uh, updated our Angular JS to 1.6. That was that was at November uh, 2017. And also lately updated our Galp to 4.0 on uh, July this year. Uh, we also wanted to um, to have um, mm, static analyze, analysis for our pull requests and quality gate on SonarCube, so we uh, we use that. Also, separate pro uh, repository for backend and frontend. And Team CT and Octopus deployment for CI and uh, continuous de uh, deployment. Uh, we've uh, used uh, Sentry IO mechanisms uh, that we linked our builds numbers with uh, releases, so we have better control of uh, which error happened in which uh, in which version of our scripts. And we've also. Um, now we are hosting uh, our static files uh, on our CDN, which is which we are using Cloudflare. And now we have better control of uh, of uh, cache invalidation and uh, version management. Uh, there was also some things that we could have done better, because you know it's not easy to work with uh, legacy code. Uh, first of all, that was SonarCube configuration, and we had like thousands of iterations before we uh, we got it right. So we needed several uh, several tries to finally calibrate it correctly. Uh, we are also getting security audit uh, every time we are installing dependencies, but. Uh, we should include it in in our building process on Team City to to have uh, better reports, and this is uh, the thing we still need to tackle. And of course, unit tests. Yeah, uh, this is why this is one thing we tried and we really failed uh, because there is this problem with our application. This one big Angular JS module, and it just crash into pieces when we start to mock it. So this is uh, also uh, a thing that we need to tackle in the future. But besides unit tests, we have end-to-end uh, mm, -end automated tests written by, uh, by uh, our uh, automated test developer. OK, to just to sum things up. Things up. Now we have better users uh, engagement. Yeah, we have around 96, 97 percent of people who are buying uh, job posting on Pratsui.pl uh, are using our application. So it's uh, it's quite good. We have less server crashes. Um, actually, our uptime, according to Pingdom is 99.97 uh, uptime, so it's quite good. Uh, we also, during this, this year, we, were, we, um, we fixed this disastrous error page problem because there were some things when a uh, when user was redirected to uh, to error page that, that uh, uh, that was causing RAM overflow and our server was crashing, so we also tackled that. And you know, when, uh, as I said, we were working on GDPR, so we stopped to uh, sending, uh, thanks, we stopped to sending uh, uh, candidates' CVs via email, so uh, they were only available in our application, so it was important for us to have zero crashes. Uh, we are using also GitHub security alerts. This is why uh, we've uh, decided to update Gout because we've had some uh, issues reported by GitHub security alerts. 
And also, uh, sonar cube fixes. There's some numbers that we reduced our duplicates from 7% to 0.7%, and we reduced our technical depth from 314 days to 77 days. So I think that's um, it's quite a nice upgrade. And also, all errors are, are now easier to find because uh, we are using releases and uh, source maps with Sentry IO. And now we are fulfilling um, most of our uh, organization's non-functional uh, requirements for front-end projects. Uh, before, uh, before our uh, uh, before our journey from Angular 1.3 to Angular 1.6, we had like fulfilled five of them. Now we have 10 out of 12. So for a legacy project, this is really, really good. Okay, so that was it. That was how we, um, how we moved on from uh, from project that was crashing every every now and then to project that is reliable and users can can use it without uh, without the fear of losing data etc and without losing uh, their confidence in our product so i want to finish with one conclusion that you know legacy code is really uh, really really hard to work with and we still some have some unfinished business like uh, unit tests, but uh, it really helped me grow as a developer because uh, in August uh, last year I was working as I was starting my uh, uh, my adventure with frontend as a junior developer and it, and it helped me to to grow to to become a, a regular developer and to um, learn about more of good practices and how to implement them because you know there's this is really easy to implement good practices in new applications that you are starting from scratch yeah but when you are uh, you need to tackle a big monster uh, there is there is some um, there is some problem with that and uh, i've luckily have uh, uh, i have an opportunity to to learn uh, how to include good practices in code like that, but you know it's not a fairy tale. So um, we decided that we need to rewrite our application. So, uh, but now well, we we have time and we are calm and we can do this. So we don't need to spend most of our time on supports. And. To, uh, to end with this conclusion, I want you that you're working with your, um, with your legacy code just to get back to work. Take your, uh, take your legacy code by the horns and just make internet great again. Thank you. My name is Misha Radomski and it was a pleasure to be here. I believe we have some time for questions. Yes, you do. Anyone have any questions? I have a microphone. Oh, boy. Of course, you're way back there. Hi. Nice talk. Thank you. Thanks. Um, how long did the whole process take? And did you use or have you used uh, external consultants? Uh, the, whole, uh, the whole product took from August 2017 to last week. We just finished. <laughs> yeah, we finished with uh, CDNs last week. Yeah, so it was quite uh, quite fresh. And no, we didn't use any uh, external consultant. Just it it happened. So uh, this was the same moment that I became a junior developer, and Patric Patricius, which is our uh, architect and expert, joined the team. So it was um, it was really easier with him. Anybody else? Questions? Of course, on the opposite side of the room. Okay. Here we go. Okay, okay, Yoshido, you don't. Thank you very much. 
Uh, can you tell us something more about SonarCube? Why was, uh, what caused this issue that it was a uh, hundreds or thousands uh, iterations uh, configuring this tool? Uh, because there is, mm, you know, we, we were using SonarCube for the first time as developers because most, mostly it was used by our, our backend developers and it was configured to support uh, issues with C Sharp. And we had some problems to, uh, to get uh, plugins that would uh, report, you know, issues with our code uh, the way we want it. So, I hope that an, uh, answers your question. Oh, good Thanks. question. Anyone else? We have time for one more question. I think yes, yes. Okay. Um, great speech. I just wanted to ask if you considered. Um, upgrading that to Angular 2 plus, or maybe doing some kind of hybrid that uses half of um, your old code and then putting some old, uh, sorry, some new code in Angular higher, or maybe React or anything else, and not upgrading to 1.5 only. Uh, to be honest, no, we didn't th thought about it because we just. We have some, you know, this, this thing that we are uh, going to rewrite it in the future. So we doesn't want to uh, build new features on, uh, on some new technology like Angular 2, 2 plus or 6. Uh, and uh, it was this upgrade to Angular 1.6, it was enough to work with uh, to, to build new features, and uh, uh, in the same uh, at the same time, we we're talking with our business that we uh, that we want to uh, build a new application. So, with new approach, new uh, new designs from our design studio. So, um, this this needs some more analysis and some uh, you know user testing and. And yeah, this, this is why we decided to just, uh, just upgrade it. Fair enough, fair enough, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? It looks like we still maybe have one minute for questions. Okay. I will give it. Oh, thank you. In the middle. <laughs> maybe we want to see it, Barry. No, no. Hi. Uh, I was Hi. wondering, um, I'm a little bit confused uh, because I don't know uh, SonarCube. Uh, uh, SonarCube, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why did you choose SonarCube over something like just plain Slint with some CI? Uh, you know, we um, we have Slint also. We are uh, running Slint uh, scripts on our CI, uh, but we used SonarCube to um, also to put all all comments uh, which it has to our pull, pull requests and uh, and SonarCube was already there. So mm -hmm. that was like Yeah, the backend inventory. used it, uh, so you did too. Yeah, yeah that sounds familiar. Uh, so you can <laughs> easily say that SonarCube uh, has an added value to, uh, yeah, uh, to what you did. It, it's worth uh, implementing SonarCube over Slint and other linters and other cold quality tools. No, but you know, Sonar, uh, SonarCube is only on the server side and uh, Team City uses it. Uh, Slint, we are also running it. We have uh, Slint configuration for our project. So we are using kind of both. And uh, we really just needed to configure it. So it took some time, but I think that we are, we are happy enough to, to use it. Great to hear that. Yeah. We'll consider it. Okay. Uh, has the journey taught you something uh, that you could apply to a fresh project as well? Like maybe uh, some ways that the original code was written, set up, uh, some assumptions that were made, stuff like that. That maybe you could improve if, uh, if you're writing, writing a, a new application. Um, could, you, could you repeat what you yes. Uh, was there anything in the way that the original application was written, uh, was written uh, that you had to fix during your journey and uh, that maybe taught you some 
ways to write new applications better? Um, yeah, there were some, some parts of project that was uh, rewritten completely. Uh, but to be honest, it was just, uh, you know, just uh, deleted uh, old controllers, Angular controllers, and uh, replaced them with, with components. But I know it was, you know, we had just easier uh, data flow, so th it was also a gain, yeah? Uh, I know if it answers your question or not. It's fine, okay. Whoa! A little warning, please. <laughs> Next time. Uh, everybody, please give Misho a really, really big hand. This is a fantastic presentation. <laughs> and, uh,